God knows how many pictures had been taken of this place, the Battery in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, where houses cling to the cliffs in the shadow of the capital city. Today, the Battery is a tourist attraction. People from away have been poking around these narrow roads for years. But not so long ago, the Battery was a fishing community filled with flakes and drying cod. It was an outport on the edge of a city, a place where inshore fishermen could still make a living if they were willing to scrape it out from the side of a cliff. And they were. Families like the Garlands, the Wells, the Riches, and the Piercies. Fish stores and stages once lined the battery. Now these two are among the last, the white one and the red one, Piercy's Twine Store. Charlie Piercy is the keeper of the old store. He's Piercy's Twine Store proprietor. Charlie Piercy's great-grandfather built a fishing premises in the Battery in the late 1800s. This store is in the exact same spot. And even though Charlie doesn't live in the Battery anymore, every day except Sundays, for the last 20 years, Charlie's been coming down here, winter and summer. I suppose this is my history. This is what I grew up, where I grew up to, where I, I enjoyed... Uh, playing out here, fishing out here with my father over the years and everything else. And this is why, just to keep memories alive, what we did back in, back in the fishing days when codfish was the main thing. Charlie didn't fish for a living. He had a 30-year career with Ultramar. But as a boy, he'd be out with his dad in the summers. Charlie's father, Jim, was born into the fishing boat even though his mother made sure he got an education, he still chose the trap skiff, as did his two brothers, Charlie's uncles. They fished together, part of the battery's fleet of inshore crews, when cod was plentiful, but the price desperately poor. A cent and a half a pound in the 40s and 50s, so fishermen were poor too. No one wasted anything in those times. No one threw anything away. And that's a trait that's always stayed with Charlie. I come from the old school. I kept the needle to, from a needle to an anchor and I just kept it as even a piece of board. If it's that long or that long, I don't throw it away, I don't burn it, I keep it. Because it might come in handy for repairing the, uh, the, our twine store or something like that. So I just keep it from a nail. If I take a nail out of a piece of wood, I straighten it up and put it there, I could use it again. Because of those days, I knew what the cost was. We, we couldn't afford anything, but I'm, not that I can, I can afford it today, but I just, <laughs> it's only me just to do it. From a needle to an anchor to a can opener from 1900, Charlie has kept it all and turned the family twine store into kind of a family museum. Family photos are here, old battery photos too. All kinds of bits and bobs that represent past generations of Piercy's and the rugged place they lived and worked. I suppose I'm the one that put all this stuff together. My uncle built all the models and the pictures I got from the family, and we kept everything over from years ago, from a needle to an anchor. We didn't throw the thing. 
and Uncle Bob being a, a fisherman, a model builder of the fishery, and a carpenter, he used, that's what he used to do. And I just decided to put it here for the family and have a place to, for the grandchildren to come to look to see what the fishery was like when I grew up and, and what the battery was like. It's memories, that's all it is to me today. How many years have I got left? You know, all of it, he tell me I'm in pretty good shape, but who knows what today, you know, right? And I enjoy more than life itself coming out here. Yeah. Charlie brings his lunch every day. He's 80 years old and the first to admit he never learned to cook. That's why his wife has already fried his moose sausages. All Charlie has to do is warm them in a bit of oil, and even he can manage that. The quiet moments between tourists dropping in or container ships coming and going give Charlie time to think and remember. Like the year of 1959, the year the battery was dealt its biggest blow, the year of the snowslide. It was a stormy Sunday evening in February. Charlie was almost 22. He'd been to church and walked home out the battery road. He remembers the snow was up to his knees. His parents were home, along with his grandmother, who lived with them, and his younger brother and sister. They had a cup of tea, listened to a bit of music, and went to bed. I don't remember much after that. I remember uh, that I thought I was, of course, there was two of myself and my brother was in one bed. Mom and Dad was in another room in their bedroom, and my sister and my grandmother was in another room. I don't remember anything after that till I got a, uh, I, something hit me in the leg. I thought I was dreaming. And it's like I couldn't move. I, everything I was covered completely with, uh, I didn't, I thought I was just dreaming in, 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 in uh, snow. I didn't know what it was. Anyway, somebody hit me in the leg and got, and got me out. And of course I came to my senses then. And that uh, was uh, the avalanche that came down over the hill. I think the clock stopped, stopped, electric clock we had up on the wall at 1 o'clock, 1 a.m., February the 16th. Charlie had been buried alive. The snow slide took the entire top floor off his house. Rescuers dug him out, and his brother and sister also survived. But it was too late by the time they found Charlie's parents and grandmother. All three perished under the snow. You know, we could never understand it or take it. That the three, three children were saved and the three adults died. But life goes on for us all. You know. A teenager also died that night and an elderly man died later in hospital. I don't think you ever get over it because you don't talk about it. Only on certain occasions, right? You know, if somebody brings up the subject, we'll talk about it, but not, not, a, not together as a family. We don't talk about it. It's impossible to measure what Charlie lost that night, but here in Piercy's Twine Store, he seems to get a little bit back. After Charlie's father was killed in the 59 snowslide, his two uncles eventually left the fishery. They turned to carpentry work, but the family twine store remained. And once Charlie retired, keeping it up became his project. His two cousins mostly pay the cost of maintaining the building, but Charlie's the man who does the work and keeps the fire in. The cousins don't have to buy much wood, 
Charlie scrounges a lot of what he burns. In the Piercy family, they call him Relic. Charlie can beachcomb with the best of them. You'd be surprised at some of the stuff that washes ashore in the battery, and none of it gets by Charlie. Balloons, boys, plank boards, he squirrels it all away in the store. Waste not, want not, Charlie figures, another throwback to his childhood. We had no money those days, and if you had to go buy it, well, it cost you extra, right? And just a piece of plank is a piece of plank, and I hate to see it going out through the narrows and trying to keep the harbor clean. <laughs> As the mayor would say, right? Yeah. When I'm putting out my stage, we need uh, what we call plank or boards, two by eight or two by six or anything like that. And I use them on that, and then some, if they're a little bit rotten, I cut it up and burn it in the stove, in the, in the store, in the twine store. But it's not all work for Charlie, not by a long shot. Almost every Saturday, a crowd converges on the twine store. Family for sure, Charlie's cousin Tony and his other cousin Art. And a collection of guys who grew up battery, young and old. The crowd comes together for a bit of music, a bite to eat, and a chance to talk old times. Come out of here. The sausage is doing, man. They're doing very well. That's another five minutes to be done. I am the token. I think the beans are done, uh, Wayne. A little more oil. This whole battery revolves around Piercy's Twine Store. And thanks to Charlie, right? Because he's the man that keeps it up. You know, we all work, for, you know, and Charlie's been retired for so many years now. And he looks after everything, you know, in our behalf, right? And so there's three brothers and it's three shears, right? And it's a, but we love it. We love it here. It means um, uh, uh, everything. It's what I live for today. I'm 80 year old. I turned 80 there last week. And that's what keeps me alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's important because he's the guy that uh, does all the work here. <laughs> we just come and enjoy it. Cheryl does all the work, keeps and doing the maintenance on it and this sort of thing. So it's interesting to have him do that. Uh, I go playing golf summertime. Cheryl will come out here and do the maintenance. And we just pay the bills. <laughs> It's my life, it's what I live for today. And, and it's somewhere for me to come to, you know, somewhere to come hang out, the boys come down, they might have a beer and have a few chats about old time, either the history of the battery or how we grew up out here, and uh, it's, it's memories. That's what, it, that's what it's about, my memories and, and the boys, you know, yeah. Ty Evans isn't related to the Piercys, but he's a good buddy, a self-proclaimed battery bum, and proud of it. Pauline, my roots mean everything to me. If I could move back here tomorrow, I would. Really? I really would move back. My wife wouldn't come back here, you know, but I would just love, love to, to live out here again, and, you know, just live a little bit of my past. And we're lucky to have a place like the store here to, uh, you know, spend time with old friends and, you know, that bit of time with some of the old friends that, you know, maybe in five, ten years from now, you will never see again. I consider myself a baby to the core. And to grow up here and Just, you know, just having that opportunity to, to embrace the bay life means everything to me. This is my holding ground. It's, it's my holding ground. This is where I want to be. And 
every chance I get, I come out here with my friends and try to hang on to my old friends and hope that new kids coming along can be a part of what we are here. Scrubs up, boys, scrubs up! Charlie's and Tony's and Art's great-grandfather, the Piercy who first built this premises, had a will, and in it he was very clear. In his will, it reads that the twine store would never be sold or disposed of, of any manner. And that's, that's the great-grandfather's in his will. I, I have it in writing. And uh, it has never changed hands, and it never will. Hopefully, in our time, and uh, I guess said we all get along, you know, and we keep it up. And whatever it takes, it'll stay here for as long as we, you know, we can, right? You'll get no argument from Charlie, Piercy's twine store proprietor. Charlie Piercy wasn't much more than a boy when he started fishing in the summer with his father. Back then, it was in the old motorboat with the make and break engine. Now he's 80 in a speedboat built by his Uncle Bob 30 years ago, one of Charlie's most prized possessions. There are no cod traps to haul today, or gill nets, but the food fishery is on, and Charlie has a craving for fresh fish. So do we, myself and cameraman Gary Quigley. We're out to try our luck. Is there one alive or what? Air fish alive. Where, here or down below, down scaries? What? Right here. Right here. And I got one for supper. Bring him on, Charlie boy. I think I hooked him twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the big, you got the big one this time. Look. <laughs> Oh, yeah! <laughs> uh, Charlie, you got, uh, you luck, got me. I got me beef, Polly. <laughs> no, I don't know. Did you struck the fish, Charlie? Ooh, nice one, Charlie. <laughs> nice one, Charlie. Do you ever wish that you had fished as yes, a career? Yes, uh, I think uh, if the, uh, Dad had to be alive today uh, or years ago, uh, we would have had a 65 foot long liner and myself, my brother and my cousins, we would have been fishing after crab and uh, shrimp and everything else. Yeah. Now, Charlie looks at a day on the bay as a gift in the boat his Uncle Bob built with codfish in the bucket. Well, at my age now, what else have I got? I enjoy coming out on the water. I enjoy going, getting a few fish for the family uh, for supper and just to reminisce what it used to be like when I grew up in years ago. He said, if you don't have this, what have you got? Seems to me you've got a lot. <laughs> That's what they tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for supper, Charlie. You're welcome. Gary and I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, like I say, have a bit of fresh fish for supper. There's nothing like it. There's been an added bonus today, whales. Oh, Charlie! <laughs> <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Friends of yours? Yeah, <laughs> I, got, I had them out there to meet you. <laughs> wow. 
well, 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 well. <laughs> He's going down, the tail is coming up. Oh, no. The proprietor of Piercy's Twine Store. Not a bad gig in retirement, one that's actually earned Charlie a government award. The plaque hangs on the wall in the store. In 2014, the province declared him a provincial tradition bearer. And when you visit the twine store, it's not hard to understand why.